They want to talk briefly about a few concepts in Chapter 9. I'm going to use the online equivalent or extension of your textbook. Some of you have already concluded that it's a good idea to use the online module because uh, it has a good chance of increasing your quiz score. Okay. We found from the last quiz that some of the items covered on the quiz were not explained in the textbook, but those items were on the uh, online version of the textbook. Okay. All right, let's um, take a look at this little interactive Okay, so in the first part of uh, we have what's known as carrier sense. That's where the device is list, um, sensing a signal on the media. Okay. All right. If while the device is listening, it, it determines that some other device is communicating, it'll wait for that device to stop communicating. And after a certain amount of time, then it will perhaps send. I'm going to move forward, and you can look at that at your leisure. Okay. What I need to talk to you about is collision domains. Collision domains. This tends to be a sticky concept, especially when um, it's time to take a certification. Um, oftentimes, you'll find on the Cisco exams that I ask you to determine a collision domain. Okay. In this particular uh, diagram, all of the connectivity devices are hubs. Okay. So what that means is each device attached to a hub is sharing the bandwidth. Okay. If this is a 100 megabit per second network, then all devices are sharing the 100 me megabits. Okay. What, what does that mean in in plainer terms? Okay, let's let's uh, imagine that there are 10 devices connected to a hub. And again, the hub is operating at 100 megabits per second. If 10 devices are literally sharing that bandwidth, that means each device is going to get approximately how much of the bandwidth? Okay, 10 megabits per second, right? Yeah, the, another drawback is collision okay uh, let's let's imagine that the device that's under my mouse attempted to send a packet to the device that's highlighted right well at the same time let's also imagine that this device um, is going to send a package right both the both devices sent at the same time right what's going to happen a collision and that collision is going to affect the entire domain. Hence, this 
entire layout is considered one collision domain. Okay? And how do you determine a collision domain? If a collision occurs, you have to determine which devices will notice the collision. If all of the devices will notice the collision, then all of those devices are in that one collision domain. Okay? Now, assume that this device is a switch. Switches break up collision domains. Each link on the switch would be considered one collision domain. Okay? And it'll play out something like this. Let's say that um, a collision happened on this particular link. The only devices that we that would be aware of the collision would be the switch and this particular PC. All right? The other devices will not be aware of that particular collision. With that said, let's assume that all of these devices are now switches opposed to hubs. Then how many collision domains would be on within this diagram? Okay, let's count the collision domains. Now we're assuming that we're using switches opposed to hubs, right? So we, this is this will be one collision domain, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This will be another one, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and da, 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 da right? Okay, we have a question. All right, now let's rewind. Back to all of the connectivity devices being hubs. How many collision domains are there? One. One collision domain. Okay. Exactly. All right. Observing the effects of collision. I clicked on this large icon and it should bring up Packet Tracer. Okay, got a question. Okay, the question is, hubs basically boost signals? Yeah, I mean, like, I know that you can get the extreme dip, but I'm wondering, are they meant for a boosting device or more? Right, not only are they a connectivity device, right. sort of like a junction, but they also regenerate the signal. Yep, yeah. so they are, you can say, a booster. Well, that's what I want to uh -huh. try to show a regeneration of the signal. Yeah, but not all hubs, though. So you, when you purchase your hub, you need to make sure that if you want it to function as um, a repeater, something that will regenerate or increase the signal, then you need to make sure that that's part of the, um, the specification of that device. Okay, because not all hubs are repeaters. Okay. That's if you can buy a hub nowadays. Okay. I just wanted to say that. We haven't talked about that very much. All right. Simulation tab. All right. Two envelopes on each of the PCs on the left side of the hub represents an ICMP echo request intended for corresponding PC on the right side of the hub and an ARP request to learn the MAC address of the target PC. All right. Let's run simulation. Okay. Click the capture forwards. Well, let's do the auto capture. Wow. Collision, collision, collision. Yeah, it is slow. I'm, I'm going to make an adjustment here. 
Okay, let me get out the address. So it looks like the network is 192.168.0.0. Okay. All right. Why don't we start here? Okay, that's dot one. Okay, before I do that, let, let's go to the edit filters and make sure we turn off some things. I want to get rid of R. We're just going to do some pings. And ping, ping falls under uh, ICMP, which falls under TCP slash IP. Okay. All right. So we'll do a ping from this desktop to PC1. I guess I better put ping in front of that number in space. All right. Okay, we see the ping is uh, generated at the PC. Okay. And we'll do a capture forward. It's the hub, and it's going where? Okay. Now, what about the reply? What's that? The replies should come from PC1, right? And it's going where? Right, there you go. Okay. Okay, so now imagine that we have, well, let's not imagine, let's do it. Let's, let's put a, a server there and hopefully there's some space. Uh, no available ports. Uh, let's let's bring up uh, web. Turn web webs on. Okay. Now this device won't communicate in a current state, right? Because it needs an IP address, right? I think that should be available, and it's a slash 24. We don't need to set a default gateway because there's no router involved, right? Let's, let's do a connectivity test. Okay, the ping is uh, being generated at the server, and it's going to the hub and on to every port that's active on the hub, right? And the reply from PC1 back to the hub and so forth. Okay. All right, now this device has a web server and a web page. It looks like it has an active web page. So I'll go to 